When my family came here in 1949, their first priority was to grow food. And then, a little bit at a time, my dad started to make the garden himself as he wanted it. He created the garden like a series of rooms that are interconnected and they all have their own identity. Right close to the kitchen door is Lee's Herb Garden. And there's a fantastic variety here. What, what have we got? Purple sage, some of the ordinary variety of sage. We have rosemary, fennel, chives, Egyptian onions. And we've got some sorrel over there. On the other side, we've got lovage, rhubarb, different forms of mint, some marjoram and some French tarragon. I think these, these kind of plants have, have become a staple in gardens precisely mm. be, because of their generous nature when they're harvested regularly. And what are these little things? Uh, these are chives. Chives, yes. They're destined yeah. to be cut down now and so that they can re-sprout and start again. She now that was always flowered. very fond of chives. She used to have a bunch of chives like about that thick tied up with a rubber band and a pair of scissors and she'd snip them into just about everything. Oh, they're beautiful flavoured yeah. chives. But again, uh, virtually all the plants in these beds are the original plants or their children. She was very keen on tarragon and for me it's rather wonderful to think that that's the same plant that she would have uh, harvested. It's the same plant yeah. and it's French tarragon as opposed to the Russian tarragon which has right. inferior flavour. Well she would have known the best. Absolutely. <laughs> and I see you've given it a good dressing of compost here. Yes, co it, organic matter is always the key in, yeah. in beds like these. <clears throat> they're, they're very hungry, these plants, so they're constantly being cut back and snipped. The difference with this pond is that Roland made it in the shape of a fish, which echoes a pond that he had when he lived at Le Puy in France. And it's always rather lovely, especially from when you look at it from the, the top rooms of the house. But what he did was to use local natural plants, native species, for the fins of the tail and the dorsal fin here. What do we find in there now? Well, we've got a lot of wild plants that have just <coughs> made it their home um, mm. with, the, with the odd thing like cotton grass. We've also got some water hyacinth on the edge there, uh, various different types of sedges and grasses um, and along the end there that's just a big bank of sedge that grows up and makes the tail thin. It is, it's lovely. And what you call marsh marigold I remember as king cup which Roland and I went and dug up on the local stream here and put the first one in the eye there. This, I've always found, is a very good pond for newts and frogs because they like the rolled edge, they can get in and out easily and they've got some nice places to hide. Yes, also it's, it's not too deep, I think it's only about possibly 18 inches at its, at its deepest point yes. and there's lots of cover with the water lilies <coughs> and the parrot weed and of course the inevitable duck weed. And we now fill both ponds with rainwater. Do you find that makes a difference? It makes a huge difference. Um, we used, to, we used to use tap water, but it's mm. so full of nutrient that um, yeah. a lot of the weeds just become too prolific. Um, but now that, now that we're just refilling with rainwater, that it seems to be a much better balance between the different types of plants that grow in here. We certainly don't seem to see the, the blanket weed in the way No, we the used blanket to. weed used to be a real pro problem. Yeah. Um, you spend hours winding it round a stick. Yes. Get rid of it, but we we barely see it now. Yeah, yeah. It looks much healthier, doesn't it? Definitely. Yes. We've tried to keep the spirit of the garden much as it was in Roland's day. And I hope what we've done is kept it true to his original creative ideas. <laughs>